تناس هستم از ایران تهران بیس ما ترکیه پناهنده بودم I'm Tannas and I'm from Iran, Tehran. I was in Turkey for 20 months as a refugee and with the help of UN I came to Canada 16 months ago. من به خاطر اینکه در خانوادم اولین مشکلی که داشتم رنگ پوستم بود بعد اقلیت جنسی شد ترانسکشوال چون که من ترانسکشوال زن به دنیا آمدم When I was about 67 years old, I started to dress like girls and act like girls. I was scared for my life within my own family, and I felt like they are a threat to my life. Canada, Europe, America. خب همیشه میگفتم اونجا آزادی هست میتونم اونجا زندگی کنم و خوشبخت بشم واقعا میگفتم بهش یعنی اونجاست یعنی زندگی میتونم اینجا بکنم خوشبختیمو میبینم وقتی که وارد جامعه شدم در کانادا برخورد مردم یعنی که حمایت نشدم به اون صورت یعنی اون چیزی که فکر میکردم نبود یعنی پنجا درصد مثلا خوب بود آزادیش و آزادی بیان و مثلا چی بگم I always dreamt of coming to Canada since I was little because I knew that I would have freedom here but what I actually realized after getting here was that the freedom and support was half of what I expected unfortunately there's been no medical employment housing or educational support and I'm still talking about it and is still asking for the help of organizations and the government. I dream about a day when transgendered or transsexual individuals have nothing to worry about anymore, and they're no longer upset or get abused or depressed because of their sexualities. They work everywhere like other people, in stores, in different organizations, go to school and university, and also get housing easily. Also for families to be accepting of their transgendered members and treat them right. این که برمانه یک ترانسکشوال زن بودم در ایران و خودم هم قبول دارم خودم هم My first and biggest dream is to have my medical facial procedures done I also like to have a job in Canada in an organization as someone who helps and supports transgendered individuals برمانه یک لیدر ترانسکشوال کار بکنم دوست دارم درنده ازدواج کنم یه ازدواج موفق I also dream of getting married in the future and having successful marriage and a little dog. I love animals and I believe they connect with me really well. So queer and trans people move or migrate with some of the same kinds of motivations that other newcomers do. They move be out of a need to be safe, they move out of a desire to connect or belong, to be with family, or they move out of a hope for someplace better. So for every Canadian migration pathway that we have, sort of economic class, family class, humanitarian and refugee class, there is a queer and trans or lesbian or bisexual or gay version or experience of that migration pathway. I've known people who've come as live-in caregivers, people who've come as uh, students, international students, temporary foreign workers, as same-sex couples, you know, reunited or united through the family class system, um, and as refugees, uh, asylum seekers, government-assisted refugees, and more recently, privately sponsored refugees. So restrictions against 
homosexuality or gay and lesbian people being able to immigrate and settle in Canada weren't lifted until 1977. The recognition of same-sex relationships for family class immigration happened officially in 2002, and that was in part because of the, the work of organizations like LEGIT, as well as gay and lesbian legal advocates. Um, prior to that, between 1993 and 2002, same-sex couples were able to access rights to immigration by using a humanitarian and compassionate application. And so it was sort of a, a backdoor route in, but it did mean that over 20,000 cross-border same-sex couples were able to immigrate and settle in Canada through this process. Um, and then since 2002, there's been full recognition of same-sex partnerships as part of the family class for immigration. So those are, are a couple of ways that lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender newcomers may come to Canada. Refugee protection, when you look at the UN Convention on Refugees, there is no mention of either sexual orientation or gender identity as a, a nexus or grounds for refugee protection. Um, and so people who need refugee protection because of homophobic or transphobic persecution apply as members of a particular social group. And it's only since the mid-90s, about 1993, that the UNHCR and then Canada's immigration laws have recognized and interpreted membership in a particular social group as to including sexual orientation or gender identity-based claims. LGBTQ populations uh, often face the same kinds of barriers. Uh, immigrant refugees face the same kinds of barriers that Canadians face. Racism, classism, sexism, ableism, ageism, heterosexism. But I think sometimes they end up dealing with these issues in fear and in isolation and unsure of where they belong when these experiences um, are presented to them. Um, when we think about settlement, settlement work encompasses um, both the settlement process of finding housing, of getting status, of getting um, social supports and financial supports and careers and things like that. Um, but when I think of settlement, I also think of um, emotional support, counseling, um, support, um, support groups and things like that. Um, so when an individual is a service provider in a settlement kind of industry, um, it's important for them to recognize um, the unique situation of the client that comes before them. So in order to do that, they need to explore the unique experiences of the individual in terms of their context. And a big part of a person's context is their sexual identity in addition to their gender identity. Um, so the reason for that is because Gender identity in particular can have a huge impact on the traumas that someone might face, the barriers that they need to overcome, um, both in the migration process as well as in the settlement process, for instance. I think, I think the big challenge for a lot of LGBT newcomers is, is trying to get support services uh, and there isn't adequate support services for them or the people who are trying to give them that service don't have the adequate training or uh, they may need to need translation and, and the person who's giving the translation doesn't have adequate training in translation or speaks a different dialect than, than them and will give a, a different translation. Um, so there's a, a lot of challenges uh, uh, in terms of expectation. I think because there are so many unique things that uh, immigrants and refugees who are gay and lesbian, bisexual, transgender are questioning their sexual identity or gender identities, um, they come with very different um, 
needs. And some of those needs are the basics from def understanding some of those definitions. Um, and not just us understanding those definitions, but many different groups of people who are um, in touch with these groups. Um, part of it is, is that there are definitions and the ideas of what these words and um, expressions may come in different ways. So how do we know um, what one group is dealing with for another country is maybe different from another group. Um, but it's really looking at what those needs are. Um, sometimes even the words, you know, transgender may not even translate in certain languages. Um, sometimes we use terminologies like cisgender and immigrants and refugees might be unsure what those words or terminologies mean, even though they might be experiencing those things. So I think sometimes even within the LGBTQ immigrant refugee communities, we get so caught up in being progressive that we forget that there are communities that are still searching for their own identities and they even get lost within that, the, the terminology world.